Yeah. Oh, my name is Dr. John Richams with Christian Face Ministries for All Nations. Our mission is to teach and to change people through uh, the gospel of the good news. Would you care to help us? And by joining us and being partners, visit our website cfmfan.org. Thank you for your donation and God bless you. Oh, my name is Dr. John Richams with Christian Face Ministries for All Nations. Our mission is to teach and to change people through uh, the gospel of the good news. Would you care to help us and by joining us and being partners, visit our website cfmfan.org. Thank you for your donation and God bless you. Hello and welcome to All is Well with Dr. John Lichiams. I'm very, very excited to be coming to you in your home, wherever you are, especially at such a time like this. This is a time, realistically, you don't want it to go out there unless it is necessary. That would be my advice. If it is not necessary, you might as well sit home in your hotel or in a restaurant and just enjoy this program which I am about to bring to you. It's called All, All is Well with Dr. John Lukiams. And of course, we're going to talk a little bit about Christmas. What is Christmas is all about? Let me tell you, a big, big number have no clue what Christmas is. Get a microphone, a camera, and stick it into somebody's face and ask him, what does Christmas mean to you? They're going to give you different type of means. And one of them is going to be gifts. One of them is going to be parting. One of them is going to be shopping. One of them is going to be getting good prices. But let me tell you, when you talk about Christmas, it's more than the commercialization. Christmas is more than buying and getting good deals. And that's what also I want to deal with you. Because when you get to look at what Christmas really is, it is, it is about Jesus. What is Christmas about? You know, when you read the Bible, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, you know what's all about? It's about, about Jesus. The whole Bible is about Jesus. And the Bible is a selling number one book in the whole world. Nothing. Nothing. And I mean, you can check on New York bestsellers. It doesn't even get close to the selling of the Bible. It's number one. That's a good question to ask yourself. Well, number one, the Bible, it's an inspirational book. Secondly, the Bible was authored by the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us about how God loves us. We want to know really good love, you got the Bible. You want to know the definition of love. First John chapter 4 and verse 10. He says, this is love. What is that? That God loved you and me. And guess what? That brings us to Christmas. Powerful. It brings us to Christmas. Christmas is the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
God loved the world. He sent. He sent. He sent Jesus Christ. You know what? He emptied himself, really deity, to come to our level. Now that speaks a bunch. Because there is no way we would have been able to understand his love. But historically, people witnessed how Christ suffered. How Christ was crushed. And when he was crushed, you know what? When he was crushed, this is powerful. When he was crushed, the Bible says it pleased God. Wow. It pleased God. Now that's really powerful. It pleased God. Why? Because a time had come whereby man, man was going to reconcile to God. Now mark my words. I said where man was going to reconcile to God. Man was going to be unified with God. Man was going to be brought to God. Now that is very, very rich. It was not God reconciling to man. That's powerful. It was what? It was man reconciling to God. And who did the initiative? It was God. Who started it? It was God. How did he start it? By sending us his only begotten son. And why? So that way we could be reconciled to God. Now that's the I'm telling you. It's exciting for us to know that. And when God started it, that is love by the way. It was not like a negotiation. No. This was his son laying his life down for you and me. So really Christmas is no joke. Christmas, I'm talking about remembering Christmas and what Christmas is all about. This is the time when we get to know that really God loved us. And so this is why I really want to talk to you about this because there is a lot of misconceptions, a lot of misunderstanding about Christian or about Christmas. People don't get to understand what Christmas is all about. It's about the birth of the Savior. It's about the Redeemer of the world, the whole world. Now, that's powerful. It's exciting because we need to know this and this can turn the whole situation around. Because when you know the truth, and let me tell you, you're going to have a good, good Christmas. You're going to be able to enjoy. But you need to get this understanding. And that's why I'm talking to you. That's why I'm talking to you today. Because once you get to understand this, you will really enjoy Christmas. So, there is a lot of misconception of, about Christmas. And I'm going to take you way back today to spend more time. That actually when you go to the book of Genesis, you see. You see Jesus. In the beginning was the word. That was Jesus. In the beginning, before the foundation, was the word. I know some people, they talk about when Jesus, 2,000 years ago. But it was before that. He was there. And this is powerful. God has always been in the beginning. And the salvation, which was first, by the way, for us to have abundant life, it was first God. Priority to man. So that he could have abundant life. Abundant grace. You could, have, you could be the righteousness. The righteousness of God. That speaks a bunch. Yep. That really speaks a bunch. I said that speaks a bunch. And so that's why I am talking to you. So you really get to know this. So that you really get to understand this. Because once you understand this. It's going to turn your whole life around. You will get a different perspective. I have spent. Half of my life. 
studying the word of God, studying the scriptures, studying the Bible. Even when I went to school, even when I went to college, even when I went to the university, it was about studying God. It was about studying the truth. I took theology. Theology basically means the study of God. And once you study, you get the understanding of the doctrine. Powerful. Doctrine. Today there is a lot of really misconceptions about the doctrine. Misconceptions about what the uh, what God is because they don't have they have wrong doctrine and until you have right doctrine you are b- going to be screwed up yeah you're going to be screwed up i say that in your mind you will be screwed up you will not understand the real concept you will not understand the real meaning of god And that will be really unfortunate. So, I want you to know this. Because this is going to turn your life around. Let me mention this to you here. One of the things, because if you don't study and you don't have the right doctrine, you live a wrong life. And I'm not talking about walking, you know, right. You can walk right. But that does not mean you believe right. That's a difference right there. I love, I, I love the words. You know, words are a powerful. Words set up to walk into God's destiny. You know, it's like lawyers. Lawyers, they basically use words. They know how to use words. They go to court, they know how to use words. Somebody can be sentenced to life because of words. That's all there is to it. The judge can sentence you to life because of the words he says that comes out of his mouth. When you turn on today the social media, you know what they are using? They are using words. War it was started by words. I'm going to kill you. I'm coming after you. I'm going to destroy your nation. Words. Words, they are really powerful. And that's why I want you to get this because, you know, the biggest problem right now really we have in the church is the understanding of Jesus. A lot of people have no clue who Jesus is. They think Jesus is uh, just a mere prophet. It's like any other prophet, like Muhammad or like a Buddha. Or like Joseph Smith. No, no, no. Please, please don't put Jesus in that class. Jesus, he's the only one who is a savior. Not Muhammad. Not Buddha. Not Joseph Smith. Any of these religious leaders. Not Gandhi of India. Yeah. These were great people, by the way. For their cause. Yes. Not even Madiba. Madiba. I got the opportunity of meeting the president, the former president of South Africa, Madiba. Powerful man. Wonderful man. Very humble man. He meek man. Yeah, God used him. But he was not the savior of South Africa. God was. God used Madiba. As much as God can use you if you believe in him right That's powerful. If you believe right, you will be able to go to another higher level. Because you believe right. But if your thinking is goofed up, is messed up, right now you are in a mess. And you don't need anybody to come and tell you you are in a mess. You don't need a psychologist to come and tell you you are in a mess. Because you know it. You don't need any counselor to come and tell you you are in a mess because you know it. I mean, you are, you are smart enough to know that. You are not that foolish that you don't know when you are in a mess. It's like a girl, a younger lady, she is pregnant and she is not married. And does she need her parents to come and tell her, honey, you are pregnant. 
<laughs> now she knows already she's pregnant. That's why many times young girls will hide from their parents or all their friends that to tell them they are pregnant because they know they will hide it. They will put on some clothes. Yeah. There the, the, the are some women or young women who are known, and I mean known, for what? For hiding their pregnancy. Nine months they are hiding it. Why? Because they know they are pregnant. So don't be full of people don't know what they are doing. No, a lot of people know what they are doing. They really know what they are doing. And so, why am I saying this? I'm saying this because it is very important we become to study the word, Paul said, rightly dividing. Rightly dividing. Because once you have right dividing, you know what is going to happen to your life? You will believe right. You will think right. You will do things the right way. But if you have wrong dividing, you are confused. Yeah. Like a new age. New age. Basically, they are moved. I mean, they, they are confused. They say, I'm God. Yeah, I'm God. You're not God. God created you. Yeah. I, I, I'm God. I can do anything. Me, I'm God. No, you are not God. That's, that's, that's a mess. That's really a mess to think you are God. No, God created you. And he can take your breath away. Yeah, he can take your breath away. But you know what? He's not going to take your breath away because God's character is not in killing people. Yeah. We need to know the doctrine. We need to know the theology of God. Let me tell you. <laughs> That is what I've been studying half of my life. Seriously. I have been studying, studying the word of God. And I'm excited. I continue to study because I'm a student. I'm a student. I have not arrived. This morning when I woke up, I was studying. This morning. The first thing I do, I study. No, the first thing I do, I say, good morning, Jesus. Because I know Jesus. I'm in relationship with Jesus. Jesus is my bridegroom, and I'm the bride. Who we'll get that picture? Between a bridegroom and a bride, we are the bride and nothing else, or we are not a bride. But guess what? I'm a bride. If you are born again, you are a bride. Oh, that's good. Jesus is the bridegroom. He cares. He loves you. Let me tell you, if you are married, and your husband does not love you, tell him you need to talk to Dr. John Lukiams. Yeah. Because I need to make sure that his mind is renewed. I'll teach him how to love his wife. That's the, great, that's the first command. That's the first duty for a married man. Love. Love your wife. Yeah. Yeah. You can say my wife, she's very nagging, 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 nagging. Well, the Bible said love her. <laughs> she's nagging. My wife is a pain, a pain, a pain. Well, love her. My wife makes me miserable. Well, because you let her make you miserable. Nobody makes you miserable. Even the devil can't make you miserable. It's a choice. You choose to be miserable. You choose to be unhappy. I have chosen to be happy. I'm like any man married. I'm like any man married. I got my wife. She gets on my nerve. Not one time, many times. But I've made a decision. You know what? I'm going to be happy. Whether she makes it a priority or not. My prayer, she makes it a priority that she loves her husband. But if she doesn't, I'm going to be happy. That's a choice I made. Yeah, I know some of you say, man, I can't be happy, this woman, this woman, she's on my case in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. Well, start loving her. Start trusting God. Because God is going to change her. Oh, that's good. God is going to change her. If you trust God. If you deal with your woman or vice versa, if you deal with your husband... 
Let me tell you, it's not going to work. Yourself, you don't have enough strength to change a man, to change a woman. Nobody does. But I know who does. His name is Jehovah. Jaira. Jehovah. Elohim. Jehovah. God. The Almighty. When I trust in him, he's on my side. It's going to fix my wife. That's my, that's my, it's going to fix my wife. Sooner or later, she will be all right. Sooner or later, she, she, I'm telling you, she will not do without me. She will say, honey, I love you. You are the best thing God ever created. <laughs> that's what happens when God gets involved. I'm just sharing this with you because I believe it. That is a doctrine. That's good teaching. Now, here's another people where they are really screwed up. And I was screwed up myself in this area because when I grew up, I didn't know this stuff. I had to study it. Seriously. I did not know this stuff. But I started studying this stuff. And the moment I started studying this stuff, guess what? It turned my life around. It turned my life around. And what was it? It was again studying Right believing. Believing right. Yes. You can believe wrong. You believe right. You believe right. What do you believe in the word of God? Let me tell you something about the Bible. The Bible is so profound. The Bible is so deep. The Bible has incredible knowledge. That there are a lot of truth in this book. That will make you smart. That will shock, will shock your family, will shock your spouse. You say, oh my God, I didn't know this money, this smart. Oh my God, I didn't know this woman is so sharp. Why? Because they spend more time in the Bible. Yeah, I'm wise. Why? Because I got God in me. Once you have God you become wise. Once you got the Holy Ghost, you become wise. If you ask me, I can answer any question based on the Word of God. I know the source. Those of you who will visit our website, I like to call myself a motivational speaker, inspirational speaker, because I can inspire anybody on the face of the earth. Why? It's not because of me. It's not even what I got. But it's because of Jesus in me. That's powerful. Jesus makes a whole difference in my life. Because without him, I'm nothing. With him, I'm nobody. My education, my degrees, it makes no difference. It doesn't help me. But let me tell you. With Jesus, I got it together. He's got it together for me. He helps me. He's my friend. He loves me. He's on my side. I can come against any opposition. I can come against any enemy. Why? Because he's my friend. That's exciting. He's my friend. And I can deal with about any situation. It doesn't matter what a problem, whether it is a financial, I'm cool. I am cool. I'm all set for life. Why? Because I know God. That's simple. <laughs> I know God. I'm set for life. I'll never lack money. I said it. I'll never lack money. Why? Because God has got the gold, is got the silver, is got all the cut on the southern hills. And guess what? He's my father. And guess what? I am a co-owner. Woo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> that's, that, that's exciting, man. And that's what you call right believing. That's why I want you. Yes. That's why I want you to believe. That's why I'm talking to you. That's why I'm inspiring to you. Because this is going to turn your life around. I know some of you have your goals set. All you think is getting a good job. You never make it. 
Yeah, you never have abundant life by getting a good job because a lot of people get a good jobs. I'll tell you what you, you you how you have to have abundant life. Number one, God. That's how you'll have abundant life. You can get a good job. You can even be a millionaire, a billionaire, trillionaire. If God is not into it, you're not gonna be happy. Yeah. You're not gonna be happy. I said it. And you can, if you want, you can argue it or debate me. I'll give you scriptures to prove that. And I'll give you examples. In America, people who have set their goal, I'm going to find a good job. I'm going to find a good job. I'm going to make me a lot of money. And once I make a lot of money, I'm going to get me a good woman. It doesn't happen that way. You want to get a good woman? That's good. But you better put God first. You want to get a good man? You better put God first. Yeah. What I'm saying, they are profound wisdoms that will turn your life around. It has turned my life around. I am a happy man because I know the truth. I have peace. No, let me tell you. Jesus said, peace give I unto thee. If you don't have peace, you have no confidence. If you have no peace of Jesus, you have no security. You got to have peace in the mind. Peace like Jesus. You have the peace of Jesus. Peace was never bothered with storms. Today, there are so many storms. By the way, storms are getting more and more. It just, just, to, just to tell you, in the year 2001, there were about only six storms. As I talk today, we are talking over 20 storms, 30 storms. That means we're coming closer and closer to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. No more five storms, no more 10 storms, no more 20 storms. We are in 30, soon they're going to be 40. <laughs> I'm just telling you this to be prepared. I am not bothered about storms. Snow is coming. I don't know what you're going to do. Well, Jesus is with me. I'm going to make it. This morning when I was coming to the studio, I was snorting. You know, yesterday I was on the TV. And, and when I was trying to get out, I got, I got a guy came to you. Can I help you? Can I push you? I said, I'm okay. Praise the Lord. And this morning I was parking my car. My car got stuck. I got three people. They want, let's push you. God brings people to me. This morning when I was coming here, three people. Three people. It was risky even for them to, 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 to push me. Actually, one of them fell down. <laughs> but they were there for me. That is a favor of God. That is a favor of God. I don't take things for granted. I'm parking my car. Three guys from nowhere, they showed up. Let's push your car. Actually, one of, one of the guys, he had a cane. Actually, there were two of them. <laughs> this is interesting. He could have said, you know, I got a cane. My, 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 my leg is not good. My back is not good. And all they said, we want to help you, John. They don't know me, but God knows me. Yeah, God knows me. It just happened. It just happened today. As I was parking my car to come to the studio. I find favor wherever I go. I have favor wherever I go. God loves me. I'm not going to talk anything contradicting God. I'm not going to talk anything murmuring about God. Yeah. Here's another doctrine. And this has really been unfortunate. Because I was part of this doctrine. Because that's what I heard the first time. That Jacobo. Jacobo. The son of Isaac, Jacob wrestled God in Genesis chapter 32 and verse 24. It is not true. It is a man, the angel. God came and wrestled Jacob. That's powerful. Because people, they get a picture. You go, you go in your strength and wrestle God. You go, get stuff from God. You wrestle God. 
You twisted God. No, 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 no. You don't have to do that. You got to be crazy. Because God has already given you everything you'll ever need. Why do you have why do you, why would you even have a thought to fight God? <laughs> why would you have a thought to fight God? Because God has given you everything. Why would that thought cross your mind? I'm going to fight God. No, God has given you everything you will ever need. So this doctrine that Jacob went and fought God and wrestled God is not true. It is God who wrestled Jacob. That's powerful. Why? Because for some reason, we have our brains. Some of us, our brains are like dead. So God has to wrestle us so that our brains can be live and we can't dawn on your mind. Oh, okay, God, you win. <laughs> Seriously. Because we have this picture. I mean, how can you fight with God, man? Are you crazy? How can you imagine you put God in the other corner and you in this corner? God versus John. God versus whatever your name is. Man, that's a crazy, crazy idea. You fight with God? No, you don't. Because, first of all, <laughs> before even you throw your first punch, you have already lost. God is always the winner. God is always on the top. So this idea of wrestling God, knock it off. We're not wrestling God. No, God is persistent with us. God, he has died for us. Don't say you died for Jesus. I mean, some people say that. Yeah, I'm suffering for Jesus. No, Jesus suffered for you. I said Jesus suffered for you. This is what Christmas is all about. Jesus started suffering from the day he was born. He was born in a manger. He was born in a manger, man. That's not a place for rich people. Rich people get born in hospitals. Nice hospitals. Not Jesus. He suffered in a manger. Think about it. That place stinks. You don't want... You don't want even to talk about it if you are born in a manger. Guess what? Tonight I got a testimony. I was born in a manger. You don't have to give a testimony because Jesus was born in a manger on your behalf so that you could have really life. Man, this is, this is good doctrine. You need to know this. You need to understand that. So I'm going to want you guys to continue listening. Because I come on every Monday at 7.30. Every Tuesday. at You know what the time I come on? Every Tuesday from 12. From 12 to 2 p.m. I want to bring you the gospel of grace. I want to bring you the good news. That Jesus Christ himself is grace. Grace has come to you. Grace has come into the world. The light has come into the world. That's exciting. The studio I'm in right now, the light is shining on me. You know, the light, the, this studio is good. They got incredible light. There's another light. There's another light here. I mean, I got lights here so that you can see me. Without light, you can't see me. If these lights are turned off, you can't see me. That's how your life is. If you don't have light, which is Jesus Christ, you are in darkness. You are blind. You are you're really blind. You can't see the truth. I got Jesus. I can see the truth. That's powerful. I'm in the studio here. There is a light here. There is another light here. There is another light here. I mean, there are a lot of lights here. I can't even count them. At least when, there are a good number of lights put on. They haven't turned all of them on here. There is somebody who specializes about lights, stage lights. All I do, turn on the switch. Sometimes somebody turns the switch on for me. That's what somebody specializes in. And then even the camera, they have to adjust it. They adjust the camera so that I look good to you. So that you can see my colors. You can see. You know, one time... 
TV used to be black and white. Not anymore. Not anymore. Now it's in color. You can see all the colors. That's cool. You can see all the colors. We have come a long way. And then we continue. Now it is also digital. Now it's also HD. HD. Which is sharp. Sharp image. I got a smartphone. I take pictures, man. They come out good. I say, oh my God. The first time, my first phone, the pictures were not that good. But they are improving. They are getting better and better, better resolution. It's amazing. It's all about making you look good. If you want social media. You know what? You heard me. Making you look good. If you come on TV, they make me look good. I'm telling you, they make me look good. I'm already handsome, but it's how about being better? <laughs> That's good. The point I'm saying is this. You want to look good, you need Jesus. That's all I'm saying. You want to look good, you need God. You want to look beautiful, you need to look to God. Because we have a lot of people today, especially ladies, including my wife, they spend more time in the mirror. Do you know what that would do? If you spent time in the mirror Bible, mirror Bible, actually there is a Bible known as mirror Bible. Because if you spend more time in the mirror Bible, it would be exciting. It would reflect God in your life. It will reflect that when God is in you, you are the true man. You are the man of the moment. You are the man of the hour. That's the way I look at it. I am the man because I got Christ in me. I'm not, I'm not bragging, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not boasting, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just telling you because I know what I used to be. Okay? I know what I used to be. I was, oh my God, not good. I was like rugs. I was filthy, stinky, not good. But Jesus has made me look good. Now when you hear, you hear life coming out of me. You hear spirit coming out of me. Now that's powerful. Now I still have about 30 minutes and I want to spend more time talking to you about this profound uh, insight. And this insight is about the bronze of Jesus. I'm talking about the bronze serpent. Yeah. The bronze serpent in the wilderness. When the children of Israel came out of Egypt, they came into the wilderness. And that was after crossing the Red Sea. Most of you have seen the story on the Ten Commandments. Yeah, on the Ten Commandments. And uh, eventually they came to the wilderness. Most of you know in the wilderness there's no food. And God made sure he gave the children of Israel good food. It's known as manna from heaven. It rained from heaven. Man, God is incredible. God is amazing. Food rained from heaven. Food rained like a rain. <laughs> It looked like a snow. I mean, it's amazing. If snow can come, if snow can come to you, to your house, to your residence, to your town, to your city, guess what? Food can come to you, wherever you are. And you know what? God has not stopped. He still provides good food today. Yeah. Yeah. If you believe in God, he will provide for you. He did it for the children of Israel and he has never stopped. I don't remember 
And I know this for a fact. I have never, never gone without food in my life. I was born in Africa. And I know some of you know, you have heard a lot about Africa. A lot about Africa. They don't have food, which is true. Some areas. But I'm talking about, I believe the God as a teenager in Africa. Eventually, I got my own family. We have never lacked food. Never. Never. That is powerful. Seriously. That is very, very, very powerful. So what am I saying? I am saying you need to believe in God. He will provide for you. So he provided for the children of Israel in the wilderness. But here is a situation I want to talk to you. They started murmuring. They started complaining. We should be eating cucumbers. That is foolish. Because the food was better than cucumbers. Seriously. It was good food. I mean, this food was fed by angels. That's what angels eat in heaven. Yeah, in case you didn't know, angels have food in heaven. They eat food. <laughs> they are fed by God in heaven. And guess what? That was the same food. Man, that tells you how God really loves us. I mean, if he's going to get food, and he's not going to give us expired food, rotten food, smelling food, food with maggots, bad food. It's going to give us good food, delicious food. And you know where delicious food comes from? It comes only from God. Yeah, it's good. Don't ask me how he makes food. All I know God knows how to make food and God knows how to deliver food. That's all I know. I don't know the details. So I believe in God and I'm not going to ask. I am not going to ask her where he makes his food, where the kitchen in heaven. I'm not going to ask that. All I care, I get food. <laughs> there are things on my smartphone I can't figure out myself. How do they do this? How does... How does uh, the smartphone remember my words and remember my name. It's already, it's already in the data there. It's amazing. It's really amazing when you look at these smartphones. It's just phones. But how about God? Who gave man the knowledge of making, inventing smartphones? You know, some of you, you go to this man who has invented this instrument or an aeroplane like the Bright Brothers in Dayton, Ohio, instead of really going to the source, who created them? Who gave them the knowledge? That's what I'm talking about. I said, that's what I'm talking about. Because, man, that's powerful. That is exciting. Yes, that is exciting. We need to know these truths because these truths are going to set us free. I'm telling you. These truths are going to set us free. Are you hearing me? So they complain and God was not happy when they complained. And mark you, this was under the old covenant law. Where they were demanded by the law of Moses to do good, to receive good. You know what? Right now, seriously, you don't have to achieve anything to receive good. Because God has already been faithful to you. God has given you everything you will ever need. Man, that's exciting. That is exciting news for you to know. It's really exciting. But we need to know the truth. Because once we know this truth, it's going to turn our lives around. Yes, it will turn our lives around. Now here's another truth I want to tell you. And because they started murmuring in the wilderness, complaining in the wilderness, 
What happened? God lifted the serpents, the snakes. He lifted, God, he lifted the divine protection. In other words, as they complained, the more they opened the door. The more they complain, the more they say to God, we, need, we don't need your protection. The more they complain, the, the more they open the door for the problem. The more they complained, they were not putting their eyes on God who had brought them out of Egypt. Shame, shame, shame. And if you are that kind of person, shame, shame on you. Seriously, that's shame, man. You should be looking to God. Because that's where your help comes from. Not from your dad. Not from your spouse. Not from your supervisor. Not from your company. Not from your boss. Help comes from God. Promotion comes from God. That is what I'm talking about. Yeah, that is what I'm talking about. You need to grasp this. I always get impressed with people who can grasp the gospel. People have a grasp on the gospel. People have a grasp on the gospel of grace. I, they impress me. They really do. Because it's just impressive. It's like, what can I tell you? They got it, man. They got a blessing. And that's why, you know, when I, the first time I met people who really had a grasp of the gospel, you know what happened to me? I said, God, make me grasp of you. And so when I came to America, I went to Bible college. I went to seminary. I went to the university and I studied. Yeah, I really did. Why? Because I wanted to get the grasp. I wanted to know. I wanted to have the knowledge. I wanted to have the wisdom. And the best way you study, you become a student. I'm still a student today. Because I want to know this truth. That's what is going to turn my life around. And this is exciting. This is powerful. So, the snakes, the serpent, waloos. And that was danger. They began to bite the children of Israel. Some of them died. Some of them survived. Some of them went to Moses. What do we do? And the God told Moses to make a bronze and put it on a pole. That whoever looks on that bronze on the pole would be healed. Simple instructions. And those who looked on that bronze on the pole in the wilderness, they were healed. Those who refused, they died. That's what's happening today. People who refuse to look to Jesus, they die. A miserable death. Seriously, they die a miserable days, which is really sad, which is really unfortunate. You know? Now, what does that symbol? The bronze is a type, a shadow of Jesus Christ. When I was going to college, one of the things really I'm very appreciative was I studied typology. Jesus is the type. Jesus is the shadow. In the Old Testament, Jesus was hidden by God because he was a treasure. You know, we, we, you have to unveil. You have to study. And of course, in the New Testament, in the New Covenant, I'm telling you, this is a great covenant. Everything has been veiled. Everything has been put in the light. When Jesus died on the cross, it was no secret. And today people who choose to follow Jesus, guess what? They have abundant life. 
They have good life. Yeah, they do have good life. Seriously, they do have good life. I have good life. I have peace within me. I have peace in my heart. I sleep well. I really do. And you can't put a man on sleep. You cannot. But that's what happens. Jesus is precious. You cannot really put a price on Jesus. Jesus is costless. That's a good word. Jesus is costless. That means you can't put on a price on him. Yeah. But we need to understand. We need to get the revelation. We need to unveil. That's what I do. Expound on this. And tell you about Jesus. Because this, he's going to turn your life around. And once he turns your life around, you're going to be a happy camper. You're going to be a happy, 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 happy man. Yeah. This is profound. This is wonderful. So what do we do? In the New Testament, we see Jesus put on the cross, which is a pole. And the bronze, which again happened in the Old Testament. Now here is something very exciting. When Jesus was put on the pole, he died. But guess what? He was resurrected. Three days. Three days. One, two, three. Three days. He was resurrected. We just had <coughs> Christmas, or we're going to be having Christmas. It's around the corner. And after that, next year, sometime in April, we're going to have Easter, which talks about the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when Jesus was resurrected, this is another powerful thing. Again, this is historical. It's the evidence of what had been said by the prophets in the Old Testament. The minor prophets. They talked about Jesus dying and rising on the third day. But guess what? He rose. Now that was the most exciting thing. That he rose. And he lives today. Man, that's exciting. Now when he rose, let me draw your attention to this part. Because this part is really exciting. There were two disciples. On their way to a bounce, which was a town. It's about seven or seven and a half miles from Jerusalem to a mouse. I've been to these places when I went to Israel. It's about seven miles or seven and a half, give and take. So these two disciples, they were walking to this town, a mouse. They are talking about, man, the death of Jesus. They were down. This was their leader. This was the man they were, they, they were looking up to. I mean, it's like you have lost the loved ones. You have lost a close, close friend. These disciples were followers of Jesus Christ. So they are talking, man, man, what are we going to do? <laughs> and guess what? Jesus shows up. Always he shows up. That is another characteristic of Jesus. You are in an accident, he shows up. Actually, before it happens, he's there. He's always the first one on the scene. He knows when it's going to happen, where, when, and how. He knows. Not the police. Police, they get to know. Somebody has to call them. Guess what? There is an accident. Where? Oh, here is the street. The address, you know. They page the information. Then, woo, 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 they go there. When they go there, they find Jesus is already there. <laughs> And uh, so they are trying, uh, you know, puzzled. How come this guy didn't die? I mean, look, the car has been mashed. 
How come this guy didn't? Well, because Jesus was there. Jesus protected them. That simple. Serious, that simple. Jesus protected them. Man, I have been in accidents. I've been in close accidents whereby I would have lost my life. But because Jesus is always there and he's always with me, he has always seen me through. Man, that's beautiful. It is really beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. So, Jesus with his two disciples, he starts talking to them. And they start talking back to him. And he said, what's going on? <laughs> and the disciples said, haven't you heard? Are you the only one behind in this area? In this part of town? That actually Jesus Christ died on the cross. And you know, everybody knows this. <laughs> you know, Jesus was amazing. When he was here on earth, he used to ask questions. What do you want me to do for you? The guy is blind. What do you want me to do for you? Because he wanted to hear your heart. He wanted to know, do you really believe in him? The only way you can express yourself is when you open your mouth. Yeah, when you open your mouth. That's the only way people can know. Anybody who is dating or quoting a woman to get married, listen what she's saying. Listen to what he's saying. That's the only way. You're going to know his heart. Does he love you? Listen the way he says it. Yeah, listen. And you are married, ask your husband, do you love me? Listen to the answer. He's going to say, well, you know, honey, that's why I married you. That's not what he's talking. That's not what you're talking about. Do you love me now? <laughs> you know, one time Jesus asked Peter, who has revealed this to you that he, I am the son of God? Tell me. Tell me. It's good to hear people speak their hearts out. You know, minds, I know people talk their minds out. That's not smart. Because sometimes people speak their minds and, and, and by that I mean they speak their sense knowledge, how they feel, you know, what they think and what they have in their mind. It's not smart to speak your mind, especially when your mind is not renewed. It's not smart. You shouldn't speak your mind. I mean, there are people who can say, I want to kill that person. Why would you tell that somebody else, you know? By the way, even the United States government knows that. They, 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 when you get arrested, they will tell you, read it to you. You have a right to keep silent or whatever you say will be used against you. It's like saying, you keep your mouth shut. That's what they are saying. Keep your mouth shut because, man, if you open your mouth, we're going to use it against you. We're going to use it against you. And they, I know for a fact there are a lot of people in a prison because they opened their big mouth. They spoke their mind. If you are smart, you want to keep silent. Let the dust shut, you know, settle down. Sleep over it. Get a lawyer. You know, this country is so good. If you can't even afford a, a lawyer, they will get you a lawyer for free. They call them public lawyers. One is better than zero, man. Yeah. One is better than zero. Say, well, that guy, I mean, he's not going to do the research and represent, but he got a lawyer. He's called a lawyer. He's your advocate for free. What a country. Only in America. You should be appreciative that you live in America. I do. Really, I do. I do. I appreciate I live in Cambridge. It's a good town. One thing I know, Cambridge is not perfect, but I thank God for Cambridge every day. You know? If they tow my car, it's hard to give thanks, but I have to give thanks. I don't want to be depressed. If they give me a ticket, I go pay it and I have peace. You know, I used not to know how to deal with some of these things, but the word of God has helped me and I've got a better person. Yeah, I've learned to thank God in all circumstances. 
I've learned to praise God in all circumstances. Yeah? I'm telling you. Because it's really, really very good to stand God and to wait upon God. It will turn your life around. It will change you. And this is very, very important and it's very, very good. Let's begin to thank God. Well, we are about to close here. We are left with about 15 minutes. And I want to conclude with this because I think this is really very important. And as I was telling you, Jesus was there with his disciples. He appeared to them. He was there to comfort them. And then, you know, he told them to go to tell the other disciples that it was reason. A lot, I mean, a lot of the disciples, they were really struggling when you get to look at it, to believe that Jesus had risen. But that's what he had told them. So you are not the only one if you struggle not to believe. But that's why I'm here to encourage you, believe in him. Believe in him. Believe in him. Believe in him. Yeah. Doubting Thomas, he struggled in this area. He said, I'm not me. I'm not going to believe. Don't even waste your time. Don't even think about it to convince me. I will only believe when I see him with my two eyes. <laughs> I'll see him with my two eyes. And then, and then. I mean, that's the type of guy. We got a lot of doubting Thomases today. And that's why things have slowed down. That's why we are behind. Most of believers, we are really behind. We got this doubting, doubting, doubting thing. We got to get away from it. Doubting. Yeah, we got to, this doubting thing. Let's believe right. Let's believe what the Bible says. Let's think. Yeah. Let's think right. Because that is going to turn our lives around. I'm telling you, it's going to turn our lives around to know the truth. And that's what the Bible talks about. Because we need, let me mention this one here because it's very important. This picture, we begin to imagine in our heads. I was talking earlier of uh, speaking our mind. Many times our minds they are full of foolishness, unfortunately. And that's what we speak, foolishness, out of our minds. Many times our minds are wicked. And guess what? That's what we speak. Because we are full of wickedness. Yeah. And especially if you don't have your mind renewed outside, don't speak your mind, man. Because it's going to show how stupid you are, how foolish you are. Seriously. Don't speak your mind. Slow down. Ask the Holy Spirit what should you should say before the judge. What you should say before you are taken to court. Some of you shouldn't even have these cases taken to court. If you would just say, I'm sorry. Instead of saying, I'll see you in court. That's, you know, that's pride. Actually, the Bible says, make peace with those before you are taken to court. That's powerful advice right there. You know, if we knew the Bible, we would really be in a better place. We would be in a secure place because we know the Bible. And so this is what I'm just saying right now. We need to look at this. It's going to turn our lives around. Because if we speak our minds, we're going to talk about this adult mind. And we need... We need to stay away from that. And you know what's going to happen? You keep speaking foolishness. Your heart is going to turn into being hardened. And once your heart is hardened, that's not good. Yeah, that's not good. You don't want your heart to be hardened. Okay? Now, do you want to be alive? Do you want to live? Don't speak your mind. Don't speak the negativism. 
Don't speak what you feel. Don't speak your emotions. Speak the word of God. Oh, that's good. The word of God. Meditate on the word of God. The word of God will change you. The, you have your hope in the word of God. Not in a man, but in the word of God. And that's why this is really very, very vital. We need to understand this message of the word of God. And if we don't, we will never make it. So I want to encourage you to look into the word of God. Jesus is much less. Oh, that's good. So good nothing can equal to him. Yes, you know, again I want to remember this. This Christmas. I want you to remember we are celebrating Christmas, but it is because of Christ. This is the birthday of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. You cannot match with any other prophet, any other religious knowledge. He's matchless. Nobody comes close to Jesus. Nobody. He's a savior. He's a redeemer. He's a deliverer. Powerful. He's a healer. Powerful. So Jesus is beautiful. Oh yes. I love that word. He's beautiful. The beautiful Jesus. The amazing Jesus. Can you begin to see that? That he's really, really, really amazing? Because once you get there, it's going to turn your life around. It's really going to turn your life around. You need to see Jesus. Yeah, what is he? Oh, yes. All together, Jesus is lovely. And I mean lovely, 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 lovely. Would you make him your friend? Every time I do these programs, I like to ask people to say a prayer of receiving Jesus. I know it feels good. Some religious people say to give my life. No, you're not giving your life. He gave his life for you. That's another wrong doctrine. You don't give your life to Jesus. He gave his life for you. You didn't die for God. He died for you. He was born to save you. That's why he came into this world. The word was lost. You are lost. You are lost. You know, it's like somebody, you are lost in the woods. And these people, they work so hard to find you. And as soon as they find you, you say, you know what? I found you. <laughs> I found you. I, just, I found you. No, 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 no. Come on. Don't be a wise maker. This guy, they just, you know how long it took them to come to you? Especially like in this snow, you get lost in snow. Do you know what people go through? It's very cold to find you. And if they didn't find you, you're going to die. Sooner or later, you're going to die because of the coldness. It is freezing. You have no cup of coffee. The rescue team calls in. The helicopters are flying over. The, 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 the police are flying over. The, the, the searchers are finding over. I mean, they're working so hard. They're trying to get the signal from your uh, mobile phone. And as soon as they find you, you look at them and say, you know what? Yeah, I found you. Are you crazy? They found you. You're going to be dead. That's how most of us talk. I found God. I gave my life to God. What are you talking about? You gave your life to God? Are you kidding me? He gave his life. He died. He was crucified. I mean, the Romans beat him up. He was defigured. To die for you, now you are saying you're giving your life to him. No, he gave his life for you. We need, we need to know that we need to read the we need to read the Bible right side up because sometimes some of us will read the Bible you know upside down we can't read you know we can't read 
We can't read. We need to just read the Bible right side up. It's just clear. If you don't have the glasses, you can't read. Just buy the glasses. Yeah, get the glasses. Get the glasses. So you can do what? Read well. Because this is going to turn your life around. I'm telling you. It's going to turn your life around. You stop thinking that. We stop being, you stop being thinking goofy. You know what happens? That's what Jesus did. I'm trying to compare the Old Testament and the New Testament. In the Old Testament, the bronze which was put on the paw, the bro- I'm talking about the bronze serpent, was put on the paw. It is the same thing. Everybody could see it. And everybody who looked at it, they would be fine. The same thing in the New Testament and the New Covenant. The Paul is a cross. Jesus is our New Testament. Bronze serpent. He was put on the cross. When we look to him, when we call him, say, Jesus, save me. Jesus, deliver me. Jesus, set me free. And he will set you free. That's powerful. So, let the grace of God come into your life. You're not, a God, you're not, you're not saying, God, uh, I'm bringing grace to you. No, no, no. God has brought grace to you. Wow. Grace to you. You didn't deserve to be where you are at today. You'd, what you deserved was death. What you deserved was to die. But guess what? God didn't do that. That's powerful. Jesus not coming to... A sinful, Jesus did not come into a sinful flesh, but he was divine. And ladies and gentlemen, my time is up. But again, I want to remind you that every month at 7.30, I'm here in the studio. Every Tuesday from 12 to 2 p.m., I'm here in the studio. You need to know this good news. And right now, I'm going to give you the name and address. Visit our website, all the information there. I put on conferences. I put on teleconferences. What do you log in? Monday through Saturday, teachers across America, they come and teach the word. And the number is 424-203-8400. Extension, all code number 103-7851. I repeat, Four two four two zero three eight four zero zero, and then put in extension code one zero three seven eight five one pound. You will be connected. I'll be teaching, and your life. I got a guest from Nigeria tonight. She will be leading praise and worship. Log on. You'll be blessed. You'll see the beauty of diversity. The ministry is known as Christian Faith Ministries for all nations. And right now, I am uh, going to be able to put the promotion there. And then you can be able to see it. And uh, you will be glad that you're really able to get this information. God bless you. My name is Dr. John Richams with Christian Faith Ministries for all nations. Our mission is to teach and to change people through uh, the gospel of the good news. Would you care to help us? And by joining us and being partners, visit our website cfmfan.org. Thank you for your donation and God bless you. Oh, my name is Dr. John Richams with Christian Faith Ministries for all nations. Our mission is to teach and to change people through uh, the gospel of the good news. Would you care to help us? And 
by joining us and being partners visit our website cfmfan.org thank you for your donation and god bless you